You're, so what? You're trying to figure out how to put the um, the like the full track together. Yeah, basically those last two bars. I don't know if I want a chorus. Like there's supposed to be a chorus yeah. after them again, but I don't know if I want a chorus after that. Well, yeah, yeah. So I mean, let me answer. So like the program I use to do it, and it would be really easy to do in Logic. Is is um Logic? It would be really easy to do to just add two more bars there. I mean, you could even use like GarageBand, and I don't know what it is for the PC because you have a PC, right? A Windows. Unfortunately, I only have uh, Cubase, Audacity, and um, Ableton. I mean, you can't do it. Oh, you can't. Are those all DJ software programs? Uh, kind of. I mean, I think I can do it on Cubase or. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's a really easy function. It's just cutting and splitting. I just know you can't do it in Ableton because it's a DJ. So there, you're not really manipulating the audio files. You're just mixing them together. But like, if you set, I'm saying, if you sent it to me, it would take me probably like two seconds to do it. Um. Oh. So if you want to do that during the lesson, I can do that before next week. But I think it would be a really cool idea to do it live with your friends, with, like, the drums and the bass. Um, because, yeah, then you wouldn't have to, like, change the song itself, and especially if you added them in. You said the song has a really basic structure right now? Um, yeah, like, if you listen to the thing, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, electronic effects, but yeah. the, the main part is that the bass and the, um, and the guitar is, like, super simple. Uh, okay, well, yeah, I mean, that would be really cool, you know, I've never heard of a group doing a cover of a song, but fully incorporating the original song into their own, you know, because that's more than sampling, but it's less than a cover, um, a cover normally is from, like, rock or something like that, so yeah, I think that could especially be really dope, especially if you did that for a few songs, you know? Um, have you heard, uh, uh, No Flex song? Nah. Oh, I kind of got the idea because they, um, so here's like the, the cover version they did. Yeah. And then this is just like, sounds like, I was thinking doing it more, a little bit more along the lines of that cover version. Of oh, this one? Yeah, just like the instrumental itself. Okay. Uh, so what are they covering? Uh, they're covering No Flex Zone. Oh, that's the name of the song. Yeah. Who made No Flex Zone? Ray Schremer. Oh, yeah. Actually, I don't know how to say that, his, that dude's name either. Hold on. Sorry. I'm sure a marijuana with a pair of boulder. Colorado oh, with the wow, air is dude. colder. When yeah. I'm in the South Pole with the pairs of polar eye crap. And the critics who deny my place to wipe my ass at the fabric of time and space. No flex zone. No flex zone. They know better. They know better. No flex. Wait, so who did No Flex Zone originally? Uh, there's a link below. In the comments? Oh, okay. Oh, Ray Sh Shremmerd. I'd say Ray Shremmerd. I don't know. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, no, yeah, do you mind if I take a second to listen to the original one real quick? Yeah, sure. Okay, 
Okay, so like you were kind of thinking of that as like a model for what to do. Yeah, I mean they do use a cello, but um, I just I was thinking like a way heavier bass line than we we already have, and yeah. a little bit more fills on the drums and stuff like that. Especially in like there's like parts where I kind of pause, or they, he can he can pause the drums for emphasis so people notice when they're gone. I, yeah. I really like instrumentals. Yeah, exactly. And this is similar to a conversation that you and I had on our very first lesson, if you remember it. Um, so what's a, what's a G easy song called, Me, Myself, and I, right? Yeah, that's right. All right, well, let me listen to, to that one more time to get a sense for when you say there aren't many um, drums, much drums or bass to it. Okay. The, uh, Sorry, what? Oh, never mind, you got it. Yeah. Even when the night is gold, I got... A Stella Maxwell right beside of me. A Ferrari, I'm buying three. A... It's just me, myself, and I. It's me. I'm trying to be cool. Yeah, no, I think that would be really cool. Um, Like, basically, I'm just telling you, your idea is a good one. And that the, um, this song makes a good opportunity or chance to cover it and fill out the ideas that kind of all the ideas I was pitching you back in that first lesson for how to make a live band work. Because if you're a live band in the rap genre work, because if you remember, you and I were talking a lot about um, stuff like that and what you could do with a live concert. And a lot of what I was telling you was kind of just what you um, just mentioned. And so this song is really good for it because like you said, there aren't many drums, there is a synth part, and there's a singer on the hook. So right away, everyone in your group has something to do. You know, the drum guy especially because he'll have to fill it in. If you had a keyboardist, they could hop on. Your, your singer does uh, the hook, and then you do the verses, right? Yeah. Yeah. I can and, keyboard, too, so. Oh, really? Oh, perfect. Um, yeah, so then, I mean, then obviously, you know, it's just a question of how you do it. And just to remind you of some of the stuff that we talked about in that first lesson, you know, if you notice, yeah, there are some differences between that Carmen and Watsky song and the uh, Ray Schremer, I don't know how to say it, um, the original one, because in addition to the cello, it's also quicker, right? Yeah. Watsky's version is also quicker. And then another thing is that she, Carmen, I guess that's the girl singing on the hook, um, she actually sings the hook, right? Yeah. But that's not that's not what the rappers do on the original one. They actually yeah. rap it. You know, they kind of bend their pitches in the way that you do on every one of your verses. But she takes it and she sings it. So, like, if you were going to redo this, you know, that's what I hate in covers is when people just cover this song exactly. Like, you got to add something new to it. You got to add something cool. So I remember we did this. Um, do you like Radiohead at all? Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. So they did this um, song called. It's not. God, what is it called? It's got the sickest. Fuck, oh, it's. Oh, the National Anthem. The song is called the National Anthem, but it's nothing to do with the National Anthem. It's the one with. Um, it's got a really dope bass line. It's like. Dun, 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 bun, dun, 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 and it's just this really awesome driving rap. Um, not rap. Like rap inspired bass line. You know how a lot of rap songs have really heavy bass lines and shit like that? So what I did when we covered it was. Um, we added chords to it because the original one doesn't have chords because the bass line is really melodically complex and it plays outside of a key. So like if you guys were going to do that, like just what you were saying, I would definitely like double down on stuff like that. Like have your drummer put in fills and basically I would make, uh, make the song really interactive between you, the drummer, and the singer. You know, like you got to continually pass the musical ideas back and forth. So what I would tell you to do is definitely do this song live um, without any parts from the song. And then, yeah, just pass the musical ideas back and forth between each other, you know? Because it would be really cool if your singer sang the chorus. But then I also think it would be really cool if you found some way where you could rap the chorus, you know? You probably couldn't rap Me, Myself, and I because he sings it. And not only does he sing it, uh, he sings it in a really singer way. But if you doubled up on Me, Myself, and I, so instead of saying, like, me, myself, and I, you could say, like, me, myself, and I, me, myself, and I, you know, or stuff like that. Actually, I got my singer coming on the 24th, so I should be able to get him to sing it. Oh, really? Perfect. Yeah, yeah, that should be cool then. So if you did that... I like singing stuff, to be honest. What's um, that? I, I don't mind singing, but I don't like it to be recorded, so. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, your man Logic does it all the fucking time, so we're trying to get you there, you know? 
Uh, he, oh, he's fucking good, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, all that shit is kind of what Kanye started, though, dude. That's all, like, that's all, like, 808s and heartbreak, you know? Um, yeah. But no, uh, I mean, even earlier, Dear Mama is exactly like that, his mixtape song, Home. Um, but no, so, yeah, so, why don't you, do you want to try and rap it now? But I really liked, actually, your idea for the interactions between you and the drummer. Like, when he emphasizes certain words, or maybe when he might even imitate your rhythms exactly with his snare. So if you were to rap, like, imagine that I stayed awake. I don't know if that's how you rap it. But, like, if at that point your drummer did a rhythm that's, like, Da 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 da, you know, or something like that, or just to underline what you think is the most important ones, or fill in your lines and stuff like that. That sound cool? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So do you want to do it, and we'll go over it? Yeah. How about that? Okay. All right. Hey, you cut you cut out, yo. It's it's that same old problem, I think. Ah, shit. Okay. One sec. Yeah, yeah. Hear this? Yeah. Turn okay. it up a little. Yeah. I know you want something Trying and striving and writing I know I want something too Grinding all night and I'm dying I do what I gotta do Ashes to ashes to dust And I'll be forgotten too With the song without a singer Words without a reader Rap with no middle fingers Started it slow But I'm here to linger I'm here to deliver Delivery signature These sold distributor Breaking the similar Spark up your cylinders My friends, my family to blame, it was a habit Instead of just picking up steam and then climbing to the summit Now hitting the paper one day, hell I swear I'm gonna run it To then elevated, I feel so elated, I watched tracks plummet Keeping it 100 Taking what I wanted, finish what I started, I'll become an artist It all starts with this grind of time, rhymes flowing lines While driving down the sea to sky It's only me, by myself and I, ACT is prime Yeah It's just me, myself and I, so I can't Imagine that I stayed awake, worked for years, music day to day, living on nothing but corned beef and lunch and equipment still waiting on a layaway. What will become of my namesake? Shit, that makes me lay awake. Failure just might scare me straight. If I do, will there ever be a payday? I don't even need any player hate, cause I hate myself when I'm not sounding great. Take all of my doubts and put them in their place so my dreams change state. Evaporate. Damn. <laughs> I got. I gotta say, man. E either 
Well, it's it's both. Either I'm a great fucking teacher or you're a great fucking rapper, okay? Because, like, dude, that third verse is, like, the perfect crown on it, man. Like, you did... How to say this? The, the artistic vision I had for the rap is exactly what you came up with on your own for the third verse. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I didn't help you write the third verse, but if I were to give you feedback on the third verse, it would have led to already what you gave me. Like that. Like, that Sorry. is like... It's like... I, I don't... Dude, I mean, the evaporate thing, dude, like right here, I mean... Dude, your rap, your rap was just so deep. That's what I mean. Not like... Oh, he's really talking about big philosophical philosophical subjects. I meant that your rap is like three dimensional. There's always something to pay attention to, and that is like uh, in your rap, and that is like so important because you're always now. You know, you started out good, but now it's uh, d different from maybe a rap you might have brought me before. Like, um, there's just always something cool happening. There's always an important change being made. So, like in those ones. Um, Dude, you ended the verse. You, do you remember how much time we we spent talking about how to end your second verse? ACT is prime, yeah. yeah? You ended <laughs> it exactly how I wanted you to, right there. You dropped off your voice. You went from rapping to, to talking. Uh, you acted like you didn't give a fuck. It was the mic drop. It was the mic drop ending. It, it, it's all I ever wanted, and you gave it to me. And it was so beautiful. And just, like, all over that. Because I could tell in your th all over your third verse, I could tell why you had made why you were doing the things you had done, and that is basically what determines a good artist, you know. So like right around here, um, uh, it's just like yeah, like you changed up your flow and you started going faster in different ways, in multiple ways, you know. You had more syllables; they were coming more quickly. There were smaller subdivisions, all that good stuff. But like it was important that you waited for the third verse to do that. Because that's when the payoff is, you know? And, and so it's just important when we... In, in music, when we've made something good, it's important to, you know, congratulate yourself, but to also teach yourself from what you made and to show yourself what was good in the rap so that you can do it again, right? Because, yeah, we learn from when we screw up or when we fuck up, when we write something that's not good, and you're like, yeah, I should have never do that again. But then also when we do something good, you're like, wow, maybe I could make an incredible song out of... Just this one part of the verse, or that, or that one part of the verse, you know? So honestly, like, I gotta say, man, like, I know you don't pay me to give you compliments, but, like, the, it, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was so good. It was just, like, I had this vision for the third verse in my mind, and you just nailed every, like, bullet point I had. So just, like... I was fun to rewrite the first two when I wrote the third one. I was exactly. Like, yeah. See, man, and that's always how it goes, you know? Because I think my same stuff to me in the music, but also in, like, the book I'm writing, you know? Like, I've just reached a level of understanding of rap, well, in the book, that I'm like, I need to rewrite some shit. But, yeah, no, my, my thing now, then, is going to center around um, your live interpretation of this. Um, because, you know, it might sound like that's only, like, something that your drummer or your singer would have to deal with. But, like, the way I imagine this working... Um, uh, is similar to the way a stable well, man by the roots, you know, like a real interactive live show where all of the instruments are independent. So it makes the music deeper when they come together because like right around here, you know, and yeah, you know, you start rapping right quicker right around here. Um, and I think you would agree with that, but something cool you could do at that point, which is taking advantage of your live backing band rather than, you know, just the normal fucking DJ playing the instrumental behind you. He can't change it uh, from yep. moment to moment. But you can. So that's what you want to take advantage of. And honestly, people always lose their fucking minds over live rap done well, whether it's The Roots, who are now the only house band in the talk show industry, um, or fucking Hamilton on Broadway on Broadway. You know, you your instruments, your backing can respond to you at a moment to moment. So right there on those lines, I think it would be really cool to introduce... Uh, a small Acella Rondo, and that's where your music actually gets quicker. Um, so you uh, briefly increase the tempo of your um, music so that it's actually going faster, and it's not just that you're rapping faster. Um, so you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I think right at those lines, if you had an Acella Rondo, 
And then, honestly... What was the word for when you speed up the lyrics but not the music? Um, or it's meant to sound like you're speeding up the no, lyrics. No, yeah, I know what you mean. There's no... The rubato? No, rubato is um, when you're constantly changing the tempo. So it's sometimes you go quick, sometimes you go slow. That's like oh, okay. that's like battle rap. But no, I know what you mean. You can only really say that you're changing rhythmic subdivisions. I mean, I've seen words like activate, like he's activating the rhythm more. You know, but really there is no... Because, yeah, it's it's not when you rap quicker there, as you just did, the music isn't actually speeding up, you're just speeding up. So you could say, like, yeah, rhythmically activating his melody more, but, like, that's just, like, technical jargon, you know? But there... So if you did an cello rondo there, and then maybe a short D cello rondo there, which is just where you bring the music back down at the end, and then, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. No third chorus. Honestly, dude, have the drums drop out right before your final lines so you rock them a cappella and then like the show's over you know well i mean the show's over and then the crowd demands an encore and then you come back out and do the f s fucking same song again or some shit like that but um no i think you're absolutely right um did you have any other ideas for how you wanted this to work live um well the, at the very start when i say imagine that i stayed awake um yeah on him to do a fill that was like all symbols, you know, like the brush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's really good. That's a really good idea. Like a really good intro kind of thing, and then um, just to give it some gravity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's tight. So, so he would drop out the bass kick and the snare there. Uh, exactly. And then for like the first bar, and then you know, kind of pick them up as as it goes along. Yeah, actually, you know, you know, oddly enough, uh, who's a great example for this is um, Waka Flocka. Um, because what he does is, well, I shouldn't say what he does, what his producers do. So basically, in your live band, does your band have a name? Uh, Take It Easy. Take It right, right, right. And do they live... Because it's too common, but... Yeah, yeah, do they live near you? Uh, everyone does, except for the singer, unfortunately. Oh, uh, okay, how far away is he? He's, uh, he's in the other province, um, it's like six, seven hours. Oh, really that far? Damn. Like... Yeah. So, um, so is Canada totally freaking out about Donald Trump being elected? Oh no, we don't care. <laughs> really, you don't care? I don't know, man. I thought I thought Canada would be like, wow, we're now the America of the world, dude. <laughs> did you? You don't? I don't know. Do you ever read the Economist? Uh, not so much. I, I have been following more political stuff this election, but it's it's mostly like we're worried about immigration because our immigration just like crashed on the election day, and um. Oh, really? And trade relations mostly. But other than that, not too much. I think that because you guys are like legalizing weed everywhere and we're trying to put that into practice, it's a lot easier once just more places have done it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, like, it's just... It, um, it legalized two states or it, three states. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, 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 no. Yeah, actually Massachusetts did. So weed is legal, man. I'm, I'm high as fuck right now. No, but the, uh, <laughs> the um, if you click that, you guys were just... Canada was just on the cover of The Economist, uh, oh, and The Economist so proclaimed that Canada was now, like, the leader of the liberal world order, because Britain <laughs> was Brexit, you know, they left the EU, America yep. elected Donald Trump, France is probably going to elect Marine Le Pen, so it was like, Canada is now, like, the leader of the democratic order of the world, so... I that would be Denmark, but yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, but Denmark isn't... Denmark is too demographically homogeneous. Like, everyone in Denmark is Danish, you know? It's only recently changing, but Canada has had immigrants and indigenous peoples for a while, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm sorry. I just, sorry for the, I thought Canada would be like, like, because, you know, Americans always make jokes like, oh, they're the 51st state. But now Canada yes. is like, fuck you guys. We're the best, dude. Because Justin Trudeau seems like another, is that how you say it, Trudeau? Yeah. Yeah, he seems like, a white version of Obama. Like, he's cool. He's, so and, and he's what? He's, he's so chill. I think he even did MMA fighting for a little while. Yeah, yeah, didn't he? And he's been... Dude, I saw him, like, he gave this explanation of what quantum computing was to this reporter in front of, uh, like, at a college in front of scientists who, like, study quantum computing. And they gave him a standing ovation afterwards. He explained it so well. It was, oh. it was crazy to see. 
Um, but yeah, I'm sorry, where was I? Um, I've noticed all my friend statuses from the U.S., they're all like, fuck, or, or they're celebrating. Yeah. And then everyone from Canada's just like, how ah, glad we're not Really? Crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Well, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I mean, I voted for Quentin, obviously, but I don't know. I'm just trying not to overreact, you know? Some people are like, he's not my president, and some people are like preparing for er, insurrections, revolutions, and my mom was like, oh, it's a conspiracy by the media that they're, that like he lost, or he won, but like, I don't know. I'm just trying to, like, give him a fucking chance first. Um, I think, you know, he came in with all these hardline stances. Everyone was scared. And then yeah. the second he got elected, he was like, oh, you know what? I'm no longer pro-life or yeah. anti-gay or any of that. Yeah, you know, but, like, I don't know, man. Hitler said the same thing, right? Like, people, <laughs> people tried to rationalize Hitler at first. And, like, well, he only, he'll only, like, he just doesn't, like, liberals and then it was like well he just doesn't like communists and then it was like well he just doesn't like jews and then it was like well now everyone's dead so um it right. doesn't go that way yeah 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 all right Something so, the, Pence, the second guy in the running is not great what'd you say if something happens to trump Pence? which is like not too unlikely i think yeah Pence Silver, he's he's a fucking nutcase. So I, I don't know. I just read this news article. This journalist whose whole article was predicated on Donald Trump being impeached within a year. So she was just like, "Don't worry, because he'll definitely be gone in a year." And it's just I think like, he might legit get killed. Like, there's already been one attempt on his life. Really? Yeah, but like, Secret Service is too good at their job, man. Because if Barack Obama doesn't get fucking murdered, the first black president in a country that had slavery until like what, one fifty years ago? They're not getting at that fucker. I'm sorry. And I thought so, but then that guy went to the White House. He like walked in with guns, and he was there for half an hour. Yeah. I I don't know. I mean, also like I'm not hoping for him to be killed. What I'm more worried about is that you know we have the Senate. uh, Is that all three branches of government are now unified under Trump? Because Republicans have the House, they have the Senate, they have the White House. There's an opening on the Supreme Court that he's definitely gonna name, which will make the court split four four with a swing vote, Kennedy. And then Bader Ginsburg and, um, I forget the last guy, are also really old, the two liberal justices, so they might replace him, so, like... Like, his party kind of denounced him. I wonder if they'll cooperate when he's trying to put through... Oh, yeah. Dude, if if you looked at the smiles on their faces when he toured the White House or whatever, it was the biggest (laughs) shit-eating grin I've ever seen, dude. Paul Ryan, I mean, they're all politicians, man. Paul Ryan is going to do whatever it takes for him to keep his seat because otherwise his political career is absolutely over, you know? Like, you can't step down from being the Speaker of the House and then be, like, not Speaker of the House, you know? You're gone after that. Like, so uh, you'll have an insurrection from your right, the har- the harder right, and, like, you'll lose. So, I don't know, dude. Just everything is up in the air, man. Like, I'm not going to have health care in a year. Like, straight up, the government pays for my health care. He's going to repeal Obamacare. I am not going to have health care. So it's like... Oh, about um, retooling it, not repealing it anymore. See, so see, we'll see how that goes. I, I yeah, mean, I yeah. hope for your sake that he doesn't Yeah, yeah, it. no, like, that's what I thought, too. Like, well, he just said those things to get elected. But, like, at a certain point, he has to honor his promises because the reason he got elected was because of other politicians not honoring their promises. So, like, more than anything else, if he doesn't do what he said, he's either going to be a a crappy president or he'll just get voted out of office, which no one wants. So it's just like, I don't know. I don't know. He is a businessman, and, like, the one thing that has always led to his success is him lying. So you only (laughs) hope that he was lying when he said... But again, that's like, you know, that's someone grasping at straws to try to justify the unable, the unjustifiable, so, yeah, whatever. So, okay, but what I had in mind um, for this verse, or what you're talking about, was actually, it, it basically comes down, well, it's not a beat drop, right? It's not a beat drop. It's a fucking, I guess it more comes from, like, the rock genre, what I have in mind. Because, like, listen to this, here, this is Karma by Waka Flocka. Can you hear this? Yeah, alright. So, Alright, so you might have to look up the song on YouTube, depending on it. But this is the first chorus, and you can tell there's a strong bass sound. There's a strong bass, okay, on this first chorus. I think we actually went over the song already. Did we? I don't think I talked about it like this, though. I think I talked about the rap, probably. I talked about the intro only. Oh, okay. That Yeah, that was probably the... Um, 
he goes over. Uh, yeah, like exactly, a- exactly. But this is something different. This is his chorus. Okay. And remember, you should think of it as, you know, the producer on a normal rap song is now your musical accompaniment. Your singer, drums, keyboardist, whatever, okay? So your producer equals your musical accompaniment. So whatever cool thing a producer does, you can get your backing band to do it, but make it even cooler. So listen to this. So there, there's that low bass sound, right? And that's also what happens on the second chorus. This is the second chorus. And you still have that strong bass sound. But this is not what happens when the third chorus comes in. This is the verse so far. I thought you were going to turn to the chorus. And there's still a strong bass here, too. On the verse. But right here, he took it out. So on the third yep. chorus, yeah, there is no bass sound. Um, and it, it's the real low one. But then he brings it back in about halfway through the chorus, I think. Hold on. I think right here. Yeah, here. There. See? So he took it out and then he brought it back in. So that's basically the way, um, and then brings it back in halfway through final chorus. Um, so basically that's how I'm imagining your drum set functioning on this song. Just obviously... a good example, actually. If, yeah. If you heard uh, Travis Barker do Soldier Boy. Oh, is that what he does? Um... Here, I just posted the link here. Yeah, he does, he, uh, he's the drummer from, I think, Blink-182. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. I mean, I know the name Travis Barker, but I honestly forget where he comes from. Oh, okay. Let's see this place Wait, so when's he take it out? Oh, he plays, yeah. I don't know. Here we go. Okay. He plays with two drumsticks in each hand? I didn't know that. Uh, sorry? Oh, he plays, I'm just saying he plays with two drumsticks in each hand. Oh, it looks like it, but it's actually, he's moving, like, really fast, so it distorts. Really? Oh, that's odd. Oh, okay. That's so weird, Damn. Um, there, sorry, I posted the, the link on the bottom. This one's actually Soldier Boy. First Kid? Yeah, Daily, Mo- Daily Motion. You ready? Yeah. By yeah, their yeah, second yeah, yeah. kid, every mom is an expert and more okay. likely to choose loves than first-time moms. The New Loves with Nightlock like Plus deeper. absorbs wetness faster than Huggies. Sorry, sorry, what'd you say? For um, the intro is mostly what I'm looking at. My friend can do this whole song, like, beat for beat, so okay. it should be pretty Aunt easy. Loves. All right. Yeah, no, that's a, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm just basically, I, I think it would be a really good idea to get your drummer, uh, get your drummer, well, yeah, I mean, it's just like the fucking principle of good drumming, you know? It's just to change up your backing, the system of your backing against different verses. So, yeah, actually, I think rock groups are a great example of this. You know, what's the classic thing, but, like, they drop out the drum set for the final a cappella verse. Um, so, I know Weezer does it a whole bunch, and it's just a question of whether I can um, uh, find an example. Like, you ever hear um, uh, Tired of Sex by Weezer? Uh, nope. So it starts out like this. (laughs) 
Alright, that is not the song I thought it was. Hold on, let me try to find another one. Yeah, or even like the beginning of Photograph. Here. You know, there are no drums. And then he brings it back in. Yeah, right there. You hear Demon, that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think if you just use the drum set like in that rock slash rap way would be a really cool way to do. But yeah, or even like, um, God, The Darkness. Do you remember the song, I Believe in a Thing Called Love? Well, I might have been one of the few people to, like, go out and get the whole album after that, but I did. And that's what happens right here. So maybe even something like this. Can you hear this? Nope, not that. Not that. What the fuck, bro? Well, I can't find him right now. Um, but yeah, I think that would be a really good idea. And some other cool stuff to do. Yeah, to get into singing. Well, yeah, and like I was saying before, you know, basically you just want to trade all the musical parts between you guys. Like the rap, the chorus, the singing, the drumming, all of that. And that'll, because that's something that live rap performers can't do. You know, and yeah. that's, that's what makes it interesting. So yeah, if like you rapped, the chorus one at one point. Um, what's the song called? Me, Myself, and I? Yep. Or something like that. Do you get what I'm going here? For, going for here? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. I, I was even thinking there's a there's a spot where he could have a drum solo, but um, we'll have to actually do it and see if that works out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even like if you were to just rap the chorus at one point. Oh, you know what should fucking happen? This. Your singer should sing during your rap verse. Um, and not, like, intrude on you, but kind of only back you up in the way, um, that... You have to loop something, like, in the background a little bit. Yeah, yeah. What, well, what I was thinking was that he would elaborate your rapping line. So, basically, what, what you rap, he sings the same words in the background. But instead of rapping them, obviously he sings. So, someone that does this all over is, um... What's the fucking song called? Yeah, hello. Can you hear that? Yeah. So check this out. Up to a shoe. Used to dream about millions. Now she working with a few. Used to know one Porsche. Now she know two. Can you hear that singing in the background? Yeah. You might think about doing something like that. So right there. At around 050 on... Hello by Game featuring Lloyd. They both, uh, Louis and Pro oh, damn it, what is it? To it like blue, chinchillas, whole closet like the suit, oh, yeah. Louis and lots of They both say, they both perform Louis and lots of Dior, uh, how do you say it? Yeah, Louis and lots of Dior. But Game raps it, and Lloyd sings it. And it just creates this really cool, again, multi-dimensional texture of something always to pay attention to, you know? And he does it all over the song. Just before the third verse, she just um, just makes noise, kind of like, ba, 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 da, ba, 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 something like that. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking that's a good time for the drums to really go nuts just before the third verse. Yeah, yeah, that would be really cool. And if she's beatboxing, essentially, with, like, those rhythms, um, actually, I think it's a pitched-up guy. Uh, it's, it's, uh, no, it's a girl, because, like, I saw the music video, there's some little really? white it, girl there. Oh, <laughs> uh, really? I mean, you know the, the chipmunk soul effect of, like, Through the Wire, how they take someone's voice and pitches it way up? Oh, yeah, they do that, but it's a girl. Oh, it's still a girl singing it, though? Okay. Yeah, because what... Kendrick does that on, um, smoke, oh, the recipe. Um, does it on, um, I love myself as well. Like, it's super pitched up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's just funny how people now do that. I mean, Kanye had to do it because he was working with a sample, but now people do it just for the effect, you know? Um, yeah. 
But I feel uh, like he couldn't really sing too, so he covered it up pretty yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, yeah. So if you, if she's beatboxing it like ba da ba ba da ba, a cool thing. If you listen to that root song, I say, well, man, that's exactly what they do. Is they they um, it's really cool. So the black black thought beatboxes something, and then the instrument repeats his rhythms back to him with pitches on it. So it's like this. No, I have all these fucking songs on my computer. Say woman, uh, the roots. Sorry, hold on. So like this. Bass check one two. Can you hear that? Bass check one two. Take a shot. That's not what I want. This. Bass Can you hear that? Alright, so listen to how Black Thought raps, and then the drums imitate his rapping. You hear that? Yeah. You picking up on that? Yeah. So you could definitely do, it would be awesome for you guys to definitely do something like that too. Um, at that beatbox part that you were talking about, I think could be really nice. Um, so yeah, and then I mean, besides that, you know, what you want to do is just make sure that your drummer and singer are really involved in the song. You know, that they're not just standing there for a lot of the time. Because, not just to avoid the awkwardness, but also... When they only, then you're kind of just, you're not just, you just, you're, it's simple. You're just not taking advantage of what they have to offer you, you know? Like, if they're just going to stand there, or not stand there, or sit there, then you might as well just have, like, a sequencer playing those sounds, and you just press a button for when it comes on, you know? So, yeah, just give them lots to do. Um, in all the different ways we've talked about, like, imitation, uh, yeah, solos, beatboxing, uh, Rapping the chorus, uh, singing the verse, and stuff like that, okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so you're going to work on that stuff with them when? When do they come? Uh, singer gets here 24th, but I'll be working with a drummer. I mean, we've we've pretty much, like, have a basic skeleton for it. Yeah. Um, I've gone and recorded the, the bass over with him and stuff like that, just, oh, just nice. for testing. So... Yeah, we're most of the way there. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, yeah, did you want to work on anything else then, too? Um, Actually, I wanted to figure out if I need to put something in where those X's are. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, because you, you do have a long pause there. I forgot that. Um, yeah, at the end of the first verse, and then yeah. what's kind of bothering me is, like, uh, the second to last bar of the third verse, um, I don't really like that rhyme so much. Uh, yeah, I don't need but, player but, hate if I because I hate myself if I'm not sounding great. Like I, the lines okay, I just don't like the punch, like the the rhyme there. Yeah, you you mean on a right? Like hate, great take. Yeah, I, I just the, everything else seemed okay to me, but the great parts sound really basic. No, yeah, what I think is basic there is actually just it's not yeah it's not the rhyme that I don't know to me it's just how you've unbalanced the bar right because you yeah. have. Um, yeah, uh, I don't ever need any player hate, because I hate myself when I'm not sounding great. Take. I, I try to say, like, I don't even need any player hate, because I hate myself when I'm not sounding great, like, I, but it's still weird to Yeah, me. yeah, no, well, yeah, just, wait, so then wrap that whole thing, wrap that whole thing of what I just texted you. I don't even need any player hate, because I hate myself when I'm not sounding great. Take all of my doubts and put them in the plate. Put them in their place so my dreams change state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was going to say something else, but no, you, you're right. I think it's just the word great, you know, because when I'm not sounding great, isn't something that rappers say. It's something that, like, soccer moms say, you yeah. know? You know? Yeah. So it really just comes down to, like, these syllables. You know, you need when dot, 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 dot. Yeah. So you just basically need to replace I'm not sounding great with literally anything else. Like, when do you hate yourself is the only question you have to answer. And if you just find something that rhymes with eight, 
there, you know, anything, great, weight, spate, pate, you know, bait, it could be anything, but no, I think you're right, it, it, it's more, it's just the construction of it, it doesn't sound cool, you know, and we just, we talk so much about substituting witch for succubus, not using the word alphanumeric, and all that, all that kind of stuff, do you remember those past conversations, yeah, so it's just like, you just gotta, like, I hate myself, yeah, I've looked through, like, all the rhymes for this. I, I can't for the life of me think of what will fit better. <laughs> when um, I'm not sounding great. All right, well, it's five syllables. I don't know. And I hate myself. I hate myself. Sorry, I'm just thinking. I mean, I could rewrite the whole line, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you could do that too. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the thing, you know. I just, I wouldn't absolutely not touch those final lines. Like, these Maybe are just too, per these are just too perfect. The way you delivered them is just too perfect for you to change those ones, you know. Like, whenever we're making edits to a rap, you always have to first start out realizing what's good, then realizing what's bad, and changing the bad, and saving the good, you know. It's all a balancing act. Does that work? I don't even need any player hate when because I hate myself when I don't captivate. Um, it it could work. Honestly, I think I would have to hear it in delivery. But the odd thing about that is captivate is just a, a verb that almost um, demands a uh, direct object. So you can't just captivate. You either have to be captivating or you have to captivate something like an audience. You know, like you can't ever just say like uh, if someone asked you like. Eat and devour are synonyms, right? And if someone yep. asked you if you wanted to go to dinner, you could be like, sorry, I just ate. And that's fine, because there's no indirect object. But you couldn't be, uh, you couldn't say, uh, no, I just devoured. You know, <laughs> it just sounds awkward. So that, to me, is the only thing about captivate. So like, How about uh, dominate? When I don't, yeah, no, actually, that, that is the, that's the approach I was going to take. Um is to go, like, overboard in your bragging. So I like that. It's like, you know, because that's a really good way to brag, is to just, like... Because, honestly, that's actually what I feel. Like, when I write my rap, I get pissed off that people don't... You know, pe I get pissed off that people, like, don't um, worship it. You know? So it's just, yeah. like, if you, if you communicate that your expectations of yourself are illogical and impossible to me but that's how good you think you are then that's a really strong way in which to brag and show off your skills you know so like it's pretty illogical for you to expect yourself to dominate the rap industry because like drake does that kanye does that you know but so yeah. by boasting in illogical ways by bragging in illogical ways you just make your bragging that much harder you know so, yeah, I like that. I hate myself when I don't dominate. Yeah, and people just dominate. Yeah, like you would say, like, oh, how'd Kobe play last night? You'd be like, he dominated. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's good. Okay. Um, and then that pause at the end, I need to... Yeah, yeah, you know, I've been thinking about that. Because what occurred to me when you paused was I just... And I should say up front, this was a lame solution um, that I came up with. It, it, it's to... It's to rap spark up those cylinders twice but that's so completely lame and so completely an instance of someone not being able to fill in a line and you can find that kind of shit all over you know it, even in rap like Nicki Minaj is someone who Jason does it a lot yeah yeah and I think part of it is stylistic but part of it is like what is it it's fucking like Duncan on it's like my chick bad I think um uh she has this huge drop in her verse and it just comes across as, like, a complete dead spot in the song. Oh, but, in Nicki Minaj's part? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm looking for it. And she does it all the time. And, yeah, part of it is just her style. Like, she relies a lot on production, which can be good, because Busta Rhymes did it to awesome effects. And I've shown you that on, like, Break Your Neck and shit like that, you know, how he used the panning and just repeated the same words. But, like... Yeah, it's going down.
testing trash talk so i'm down i put i'm in i have to oh. running down the court i'm dunking on them these are less sleep it, it, it's going down basement yeah right? like right there it's going down basement if you didn't what she did is she chopped up her voice to take up more of the bar she, she so she really doesn't say it's going down basement she says it, 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 it's going down so it takes up more space but like just try to wrap it without doing that and really it's just a crutch she's using production as a crutch and it's so obvious that it comes across as really bad so it's like right here it's going down basement friday the 13th yeah, hold on. Then I put up and I have to oh, running down the court. I'm dunking on them. Lisa, let's see. It's going down. Basement. It, it, it's going down. Basement. Friday the 13th. Guess who's playing Jason? Sorry, Tuck I gotta yourself. get this out. Yeah, but I have to running down the court. I'm dunking on them. Lisa, let's see. It's going down. Basement. Friday the 13th. Guess who's playing Jason? Oh, uh, yeah, that's weird. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm just saying to avoid doing that. Because some people repeat lines, but you should always. You should only repeat your strongest lines. So, like, an example of that is, um, fucking, I think it's Big V's verse on Life's a Bitch, um, which is a Nappy Root song. Um, so let me just show you the kind of line you should repeat real quick. Like, this is it. Right here, this line. So, I mean, he repeated his strongest line. Um, and actually, the rap genius doesn't have it repeated, but that's the line he repeated. And obviously, it's his best line because the whole song is about how much life sucks or whatever. And this is his strongest line because it's a question that people don't ask themselves in public. You know, it's a question they will only ask themselves in their darkest moments. Like, what about my girlfriend? If I went to jail, would she stay faithful or would she just fuck anything that walked by? You know? And so he repeats it because he realizes what a good line it is. And it's not that Spark Up the Cylinders isn't a good line. It's just that it's not important to the overall message of the song. So you yeah. should you, yeah, you shouldn't make it... Yeah, right. Like, your whole point isn't about sp smoking weed. Your whole point is about something else completely differently. So if I were you... And I mean, to do, I don't, like, spark up the cylinders, spark up the cylinders. I don't know, I mean, what if you, what if you, I, and again, this is what your live backing band, the fact that they're so flexible, more than a studio sample, is, this is where it comes in really helpful. Because you could do another, you could do a few things. You could drop those bars completely, right? Because those bars are on the song, but just like you added bars to your final verse, you can also, also take bars out of verses, right? So you could drop those bars completely and just do spark up the cylinders and then bring in the chorus, you know? I feel like I pull my pick up on that without knowing it, but like, oh, something's off, it ended short. Yeah, see, well, well, hold on, hold on. Did you wrap it? I have to see whether you end spark up those cylinders is in an even bar or an odd bar. It's an even bar. It ends right at the end of the bar. Okay, so if we were to take out those bars, would it be two bars or one bar? If we were to take out the bars that don't have any words in them right now, would we be taking out two bars or one bar? Um, one. Really? Uh, diesel distributor breaking the similar spark up the cylinders. Yeah. Um, started to uh, clap one. Could you go from started it slow? Breaking the stimplers, spark up the cylinders. Yeah, could you go from started it slow? Uh, yeah. Started it slow, but I'm here to linger. I'm here to deliver delivery signature. Diesel distributor breaking the similar spark up the cylinders. Yeah. I st I, I still can't tell. I'm sorry. Could could you wrap the first? Yo, just do me a favor. Wrap the first whole first verse with the backing beat. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sorry. It's important to get this right. Because if we're taking out one bar, it will sound weird. One bar will sound weird. Taking out two probably won't. Mm -hmm. uh... Yeah. I 
know that you want. <laughs> want and then left for that moment. I know you got something. Trying and striving and writing. I know I want something too. Grinding on land and I'm dying. I do what I gotta do. Ash to ash to dust and now be forgotten too. What song without a singer, words without a reader, rap with no middle fingers. Started it slow, but I'm here to linger, I'm here to deliver, delivery signature. Be sold distributor, breaking the similar spark of the cylinders. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, alright, I think it will sound weird, because it's one bar of double time. I was thinking doing maybe a Tech 9 type thing, um... Put another triple on the end, so the sole distributor break the similar spark of sin. There's light him in da 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 something like that. Yeah, yeah, but like to me, that just doesn't. What I liked about your third verse is that it was so different from the first one. Mm -hmm. Like your first verse sets up your third verse because your first verse is laid back, and one of the ways in which it's laid back is that you trail off spark up the cylinders. So here, I think it's one of those things that you don't rewrite the line. You just rework it, and you work with what you're already given. So, like, spark up the cylinders. Spark up the cylinders. I like, what if you... Mm -hmm. No, don't repeat it. Could you do it one more time? I'm sorry. Could you wrap the first verse one more time to the beat? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. It's tough. Sometimes I have to do it, like, so many times. I'll, like... I have, like, a terribly short memory. Yeah, so like yeah, same. Our way through. I, actually, I was going to say, dude, yeah, that's why we don't make a great pair when I reference past lessons and shit like that. But, yeah, <laughs> actually, wrap, spark up those cylinders and then pause the song. Okay. Just wrap it once, pause the song, and I'll insert it in my mind, and I'll tell you whether it works or not. Okay. <laughs> I haven't forgotten Wanting in life for that moment I know you got something Trying and striving and writing I know I want something too Grinding all night and I'm dying I do what I gotta do Ashes to ashes to dust And I'll be forgotten too with the song without a singer, words without a reader, rap with no middle fingers. Started it slow, but I'm here to linger, I'm here to deliver, delivery signature. These old distributor breaking the similar spark of your cylinders. I think it could work, actually. If you go spark up the cylinders, hey, it's just me, myself, and I, I think it could work. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm going to try cutting it first and then just see how it sounds, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I would try cutting it because, like, to people who know the song, it might sound weird. But to people who don't know the song, it won't sound weird. Spark of the Cylinders. Oh, uh, Spark of the Cylinders. Like, like I'm trying to count it. Listen to this. Because there are a couple ways you could do it, right? You could do it like this. Spark of the Cylinders. Sorry, hold on. Spark of the Cylinders. Oh, it's just me, myself, and I. Or you could do Spark Up the Cylinders. Oh, which is still... Wait. Spark Up the Cylinders. Oh, yeah. So, so like, you kind of have to decide, too, how long you're going to wait before you bring in... Oh, it's just me, myself, and I, you know? So maybe something like this. That one that you just did was enough time for me to say yeah and then start it right away. Yeah, okay, you want to do that? So you wait two beats. Wait two beats, then start chorus. So it'll be like this. Spark of the cylinders. Oh! Hear that? So it's like, spark up the cylinders. One, two. Oh! Like that, okay? So And okay. yeah, maybe the other one's too quick. It's like, spark up the cylinders. Oh, it's just me. Or maybe, because what they actually do, I think, is spark up the cylinders. Oh, so they actually do six, which is too long. So they do six. And maybe right away is too quick, and but two is just right. So, I, yeah, I would. do you think that, is that what you would say? 
Yeah, and, and cutting it is really easy for me. Uh, um, I wasn't sure how to loop it, but I can totally do that. Yeah, so. yeah, and right at those two beats, your drummer then would have something to do, and that would accomplish our that would simultaneously accomplish all of our artistic goals, right? It would keep you from having a dead, boring spot in your rap to it would give your drummer a chance to do something cool and it would um, remake the song in a new interesting way since that isn't in the original one you know I'll, I had another idea yeah. have the drummer do a lead in one second I actually yeah that, well that's what I was saying for him to do something cool is that would be really cool because that's a good pause for him to do it yeah No, sorry. So I was thinking, uh, spark up your cylinders, something like that. Okay. I don't know if you could hear that well. Wait, but wait, yeah, do it one more time. Uh. So uh, as I'm ending the line, spark up your cylinders. Yeah, 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 no, I feel that. I and mean, yeah, that's something your drummer could definitely do. Um, yeah, just try to make it something that connects to the chorus and just doesn't come right before it, you know? So make sure make sure the drum fill connects to the chorus and isn't just something cool that happens right before it. It's probably the best feedback for that spot I can give you. But yeah, two beats is perfect because then later on at the start of the third verse, you'll increase the size that he has to work with a little bit into, like, one or two bars, you know, with the, with the symbols and, and shit like that. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we solved that problem. Did, did you mention anything else? No, that's it. That's, you know, right. I feel like I'm almost actually done with this. Wait, I want to write another one that's this good, and I'm not sure if I want to keep on working on Sucker for Pain, just because the start was not... I, I don't think it's anywhere close, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no, like, yeah, it is hard to know when you have to cut, what do they call it, cut and run, or cut bait, you know, and just stop sinking your time and energy into a project that isn't going well. Because it's happened a lot to me where I had a really definite vision for a song, I work on it for 10 hours, and then I, like, I'm like, not only do I have no fucking idea where I am, I'm at a point that confuses my original artistic vision. You know, you yeah. just get so deep into it, you're like, I don't know what this is anymore. And it's confused what I had in the first place. Dude, I've gone back to songs, and I'm just like... And it's a shame, because they were great at one point, but I'm just like, I have no idea what this is, and I can't work with it. Um, So yeah, I'm not saying like... Especially, I was like, oh, if I had someone who could kind of sing rap, I think I could make this sound really good, but... Yeah working on it and i just can't get the delivery down not not in the next like little while anyway yeah exactly so, so, yeah so at that point it's just like you're trying to learn your lessons and move on to the next one and that is just one of those things that's way easier said than done because yeah dude i so there's this song um so this guy and this song has like seventy thousand views and i've been helping him as a um almost as like a consultant for his promotion team so i let him know what i think about when i um uh, when I get emails from people about this or that. So it's this thing called, uh, it's a song called Payday. Yeah, and it has 120,000 views. Uh, so it's pretty popular. And I, uh, he asked me to do a re or remix of it, and so I'm working on one. And I went for this really genius noise remix. I made a noise remix of it. So, like, I sampled, like, at the drive-in, um... I did double time. Dude, I had something where I slowed down the track, the backing track behind him, so that he was rapping in like 16 to 15 polyrhythms. So for every 15 notes that he rapped, 
there were actually 16 notes in the drum track behind him. You can think of it like that. And, like, now I skipped working on it this week because I'm at, like, it's not that I don't know where I want to go. It's just that, at, that I'm at, like, a fork in the road, you know, where, like, if I make a series of not bad but maybe wrong artistic decisions next, like, I'm just in the fucking rabbit hole, man, you know? Like, I said it to a different student, like, one time on one of his songs, I was like, look, you played me one song, but there are really two ideas on this song. And every song can only be about one idea. So for him, it was kind of like this odd mix between, like, acoustic guitar rap and electro rap. Because he was playing an acoustic guitar with really lovely chords. But then in the background, he had, like, electro studio backing vocals of, like, a wailing almost like a wailing African shaman, which sounds, which was way cooler than it sounds. It actually sounded awesome. But still, it was two fucking tracks. So now, like, yeah. with this noise remix, I'm just like, I, I may have gone too far, man. It's, like, so fucking in your face that, like, even, because, you know, like, art is meant to push boundaries, but, like, this one, you know, artistic boundaries where Kanye makes noise, rap, or strong electro not weird in rap, you know? But, like, for me, it's just, like, even for me, it's too much, you know? Because when you listen to classical music, you have to be ready to hear stuff that you're not ready for. But, like, th this one... So, I'm just saying I can relate to Sucker for Pain. And you always got to know where the where the difference is, you know? Yeah, I uh, I do that quite often. I'm like, where was I going with this? Yeah, no yeah. Care. Yeah, and, yeah, and it doesn't... Yeah, it's a shame, because, like, it doesn't happen that much to me. And I have... I start out with really strong visions... But I will rewrite it, but every time I try and rewrite the same instrumental, like I end up remembering what I wrote. What before. you already wrote before. That's like the death knell. That is at the absolute death knell. It's just like, dude, give it a, give it a year. You know, you'll come back. You'll be long in the game, so it doesn't even matter. So like, I've done songs with that, and then you come back, and then you're kind of like, yeah, yeah, I do have an idea. You know, and it's just like when you finish stuff, you can't let the good be the enemy. Of, no, you can't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. When a song is finished, it's finished. You just gotta wrap it up and put it away. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you want to do this next Saturday, yo? Um, I don't think I can make it next Saturday. Actually, this next weekend I'll be pretty busy because my friend's coming over from LA. I'm showing her around. Um, okay. Cool. Well, do you want to set it up for two weeks or just play it by ear and you text me? Uh, two weeks. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'll text you because <laughs> yeah. it's my birthday the week after. I'll probably be pretty hungover. Woo! I'll try my best to make it though. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's straight. Whatever you want to do. And if I want to hear from you, I'll text you, all right? Okay, cool. Okay, yeah, peace, man. I'll talk to you later. All right, see you. Later.